Hi everyone, my name is Tommy and welcome back to my shop. Uh, so we're in the last uh, little stretch of uh, this build here on the Mandola and uh, I'm gonna show you uh, how I go about doing all the little things that are left because like we think like we just have to put everything back on and everything's gonna be okay but there is something that we we want some attention to and that's gonna, it's gonna make a big difference in the overall look of the instrument and also especially in the peghead area uh, for the holes here and putting the bushings and uh, how the lacquer interacts with the bushings. So first thing I want to do is clean the, the fretboard and if you remember in the previous video I cut the, the corner of the lacquer uh, with the same angle I had for the corner of the frets and, and then I went all the way to the binding so all that's left is the top section so if I use a little blade should be easy to scrape off the excess without damaging the side of the instrument. Now the lacquer is removed everywhere so I'm going to polish the frets and in order to do that I want to protect uh, once again the ebony so I'm going to put some tape and just leave the frets exposed. So now you can totally see why I put some tape on here uh, the whole length even though it's just a little cloth uh, with the RPM and the abrasive that we put on there uh, it does a great job on the frets but it would do quite uh, the mess on the fretboard. So on top of uh, protecting the fretboard the tape actually removes all the little debris that we had on the fretboard. You also notice I didn't call, uh, I didn't uh, stick the edges because I don't want to have any glue residue onto the onto the lacquer on each side. So the tape was uh, there for about 15 minutes, uh, and you don't want to leave it on there either, just so there's minimal amount of glue on the fretboard. I'm going to use a little piece of cotton and just remove the excess residue. You can see it's black already, that's the first fret. So we're just going to clean them up. I already did the uh, edges here uh, so they're not sharp so it doesn't catch on the cloth at all. So I did that in the previous video. I like to do that early. As 
you can see here, so our frets are all done. Something else I like to use at this point is super fine steel wool, and that's to uh, sand in a way the, the fretboard. So what I do is just go from the top here and just go in the same wood grain as the fretboard to remove any little scratch that could be there. Next step is the fretboard conditioner. So it's an oil that uh, goes into the fretboard. So next step will be to fit those bushings. Now I had them halfway in last time and they were already tight and uh, there's extra lacquer now in the hole. So uh, I, if, if I would end up pushing my bushings right now the way it is, it would uh, either crack the lacquer, crack the veneer or uh, worst case scenario would do both and then would lift the, the lacquer so you would have like a little pocket of air it would look like a little pocket of air underneath the so the lacquer would delaminate so what I'm gonna do is I use that little micro file and only on downstrokes in the hole to remove the extra lacquer and I'm gonna slowly work my bushing in its position and I'll do that for eight of them. So you want it snug but you don't want it too snug and and you don't want it too loose that it just comes back up. I only do downstrokes. Uh, the reason is that if you do a upstroke and it catches the side then you end up with a, a little split of uh, lacquer once again.
So at this point I get asked often how I deal with the intonation. So first of all I'm going to make sure that my bridge is centered by moving it side to side with not a lot of tension on it. Then I'm going to play my uh, fourth string first. As you can see I've got minus three cents and then when I play the octave which is right here I have minus 27 cents. So what that means is from here to here, I have the proper note because I tensioned it here to the proper note. But when I go an octave higher, it means that because I'm too low, that the length of this string is still too long. So that means I have to move my bridge this way and then readjust the open string until I get this to a perfect octave. This will mean that at this point that my bridge is located at the right place and then I can move to the bottom string or the first string and then do the same only on this side. When those two strings are in pitch and uh, in octave that means that the intonation is set and then whatever uh, intonation that was put on your bridge according to your drawing should be uh, in, in a very close area to where it's supposed to be. So now my intonation is set properly, so I move the bridge this way to accommodate the intonation of this string and this string, which means the pair will be okay as well, will be intonated. And then for the G and the D, that are the pairs in the middle, uh, the G being here and the D here, uh, those ones should technically be really close. So I'm going to put all my strings now. I made sure that I was still in line so I don't have to move the bridge anymore to double check after that. So I've been playing for a bit and uh, the obvious thing is uh, the, the lacquer constricts the uh, movement of the instrument but that's normal. Uh, it takes, depending on the amount of playing the player would do on their instrument, it can take up to like a month to several months to a year to actually free up the, the soundboard and the movement uh, of, the mo uh, of the instrument to get back the flexibility it had when we had this, the, the strings on before the, the lacquer. Uh, it does sound good uh, as is. There's still a good level of vibration, it's just that it, the sustain is not as uh, big as it was before. Uh, it's not as loud as it was either. noticed uh, here I have a buzzing fret uh, so a few things about I don't know why I missed that but uh, a few ways to fix that would be to uh, raise the bridge a bit but I I don't really want to do that because the bridge is I have a nice action on it and uh, I like to keep it as low as possible because if you're a, a, a player that likes to play uh, uh, very, very like subtle notes. It's better to have it low, and if you're gonna be strumming really hard, well, at that point you can always raise it. Uh, that being said, something that you need to know is that if you only 
uh, raise the bridge by moving the thumb wheels to raise it up, the string at this point will not move. There's a lot of pressure right now here. So if you are even able to move those thumb wheel, what that's going to do is those strings are going to stay there. You're going to push the, the base of the bridge down, which is going to constrict the plate because the plate right now has flex to go up and down. And if you push it down, it only has the bottom position. So you're, you're going to end up having an instrument that doesn't have any response. So when you want to raise the bridge, you need to loosen the tension. You don't have to take the strings off, but loosen the tension so like the string can be removed from the bridge. And then with the, the string still on the bridge, you can raise it uh, that way. And then you re-put the tension on your strings. And to make sure that everything's fine, you, you check up your... Uh, your intonation again uh, but this shouldn't change uh, much or at all when you raise up and down so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fix the fret so it's the seven that buzzes so which means it buzzes on the eighth so technically that yeah there's a bit of rocking back and forth here that I can notice with the little uh, scraper so I'm gonna have to take my strings off and go back with uh, my fret file until this is flat and then I real, I'll repolish this fret and uh, then it the, the bus should be gone I'm not too sure why I missed it the first time maybe I thought the bridge was I, I remember there was a buzz uh, occurring in this area but I checked with the little card scraper and nothing was happening so uh, I, I'm not too sure how I missed it, but uh, it's it's an easy fix. So I'll just take that off and then I'll get back to you guys. So the strings are back on as you can see and on the 7th fret of the D string there's no more buzzing. So that was the one that we had an issue with so that's all fixed up. So this concludes the uh, uh, build series on the H5 Mandola. Uh, I'll be sending this in the US uh, to uh, my customer that he's been following along with his daughter and they said they were really enjoying the video so I do appreciate the feed feedback. Uh, I want to thank everybody that's been following and interacting in comments or liking and sharing the videos that I put out. Uh, you guys have been great and uh, I'll be having something uh, new coming uh, down the pipe for this channel. Uh, I'm working on some new drawings right now so I'm not sure if it's going to be like right away or maybe in a two, three, four months uh, period, but uh, there some, should be something pretty interesting coming uh, to follow along again. So uh, make sure you, you uh, watch at the end of the video. I'm going to putting, be putting some pictures of uh, this instrument. I'll set up my little uh, uh, photo booth and uh, my backdrop and uh, try to I get uh, the best shot possible of this instrument before I send it away. Uh, I want to thank you guys for stopping by and watching again and until next time I wish you well.